as the canola industry is uh, developing high oil content canola, uh, we do not know how the high oil content canola would store compared to the traditional oil content. Typically, the oil, currently the oil content of the uh, newer varieties or high oil varieties around 46% whereas the uh, standard varieties, that's the term we are using, would be around 42%. And those are the mo uh, oil content levels we used in our study. The reason to conduct this study was because as the oil content of the uh, canola increases, the material which uh, is non-oil, so protein and uh, fiber, uh, fiber component and the carbohydrate and polysaccharides, they uh, get reduced and that means for a given moisture content uh, on a overall seed basis the moisture content on that dry matter which is a non-oil would be uh, uh, greater than compared to the standard oil canola so because of that we felt uh, it was hypothesized that high oil content of canola probably would spoil faster than the low oil content canola uh, and that's why we proposed this study to the canola clusters program uh, where we were uh, given the funding to do the comparison between uh, storage characteristics and the uh, safe storage uh, to develop safe storage guidelines for, for high oil content canola. S safe storage characteristics we use a uh, uh, pail where we would put a certain amount of canola but in this particular case we would uh, uh, fill the bottom of this pail with the uh, uh, specific uh, particular specific gravity of the uh, saturated salt solution with that we maintain a constant relative humidity inside the bag that relative humidity is matched with the moisture content. So in this particular study, we uh, would set up different uh, moisture content samples in the, uh, in the ba uh, uh, pail. By the, uh, the pails, uh, the canola is then supported with these three uh, 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 small containers inside there. They are used as a support. And then the uh, three of them, then we put this particular one as a support inside the pail. Uh, and then uh, we would put the canola in the bags, uh, so uh, three different bags like this. The first one we uh, put it as a buffer bag at the bottom, and then we put the bag from which we take the samples on top of that, and then another bag is put as a buffer bag. The purpose of the buffer bags is to maintain the moisture content constant during the study, and we would then sample from the middle bag uh, for analysis of the germination, moisture content, free fatty acids, uh, visible mold, and invis invisible mold. Uh, and then using that information, then we develop the uh, safe storage guidelines. Currently, uh, we are uh, uh, we use the literature data uh, for the uh, uh, for the standard uh, oil canola, and using the literature data, we don't know what the method those authors would have followed. So we are currently repeating that study on standard canola, uh, but based on the preliminary results, uh, when we compare with the previously published uh, literature with the high oil content canola results from our study. It seems that high oil content, uh, content canola does spoil a little faster than the uh, standard oil canola. Uh, but we would know more once we have completed the study and then have done the thorough analysis of the results uh, uh, for the standard oil canola and compare that with the high oil content canola. I think that would be next part, but I would say right now that the safe storage guidelines probably uh, because of the, uh, the, the change in the oil content is about 4%, the likelihood of having a significant effect on the storage guidelines uh, probably would not be there. Based on the current results, it seems like that little lower moisture for storage would be safer. So if a farmer was storing the standard oil canola at 9%, then storing high oil canola at uh, eight, eight and a half percent would be uh, safer. Uh, 
Uh, no, they almost look uh, very similar. And again, uh, our results on the standard oil are currently being done using the same methodology so we can do the direct comparison. But compared to literature, they look about the same. The uh, silo bags or grain bags were uh, originally designed uh, uh, in Argentina and they are being marketed around the world right now. But if you look at the literature of the uh, company which initially developed these, they clearly say that these bags are designed for storing dry grains uh, for short duration. Uh, but the equipment required to load and unload grains cost about fifty to sixty thousand dollars. So when a farmer has bought that equipment for filling and emptying the bags, uh, then they want to use this as much as possible. So a lot of time farmers are pushing the limit uh, where they are storing wet grain or high moisture grain in those bags, uh, and that's when the, some of the issues could occur. Another issue with the bags is the bags were developed in Argentina, different climatic conditions, and they have not been assessed uh, widely, but certainly they have not been assessed under Canadian conditions. Uh, and what would happen because our temperatures can fluctuate uh, somewhere from minus uh, 40 to plus 40, or certainly minus 35 to plus 35, and such a large temperature variation, what effect it has on the moisture migration inside the bag, in terms of the spoilage. Uh, another thing with the bags is also the larger amount of grain is uh, on the periphery, so it does experience that uh, temperature uh, variation or duodenal variation much more than it would uh, experience the amount of grain which would experience that variation in the large uh, bins. Uh, uh, so that's another reason why it needs to be assessed. So in the first year of the study, we used the three different moisture content, uh, 8, 10, and 14 percent. And the reason we used those moisture content was 8 would be considered very dry. And based on our uh, experience with the storing canola, we felt that 8 percent moisture content should not spoil in these bags. So that's why the 8 percent was chosen. Uh, 10 percent is the standard grade for canola. So we wanted to use that because that's the what typically Grain uh, canola is marketed at that uh, that moisture content, and that's the one when farmer probably would consider safe for storage and would probably use that. So that's why 10% was selected, and 14% was selected to see uh, as a damp grain, and would the 14% is uh, store because some farmers do use the high moisture content for storing uh, canola in bags. So in the first year when we did that study, uh, we stored the canola for 10 months. And what we found was that 8% moisture con content canola did not spoil, and 10% uh, moisture content canola had slight uh, decrease in germination, other than the small pockets which uh, were around the top of the bag where moisture may have accumulated, so there were some small uh, pockets of uh, spoilage. Whereas 14% moisture canola really got caked, and even for unloading, for 8 and 10% moisture content canola it flowed freely, and we were able to use the grain unloader, but for 14% moisture content canola, we had to use a front-end loader because the caking was so large. So based on those recommendations, uh, uh, after year one, we had made a suggestion that we should store canola, 8% uh, moisture content canola could be stored in the bag safely for up to 10 months, and even 10% moisture content canola could be stored for reasonably uh, that amount of time, so between uh, eight to uh, 10 months. So in the second year of the study, we, because of based on the first year, the 14% con contained moisture was too high. So that is the moisture which farmers should not be storing canola at. As you, uh, the 10% moisture content is the standard grade or the dry, uh, the reason we chose the 12% moisture content was to see what is the upper limit. The 14 certainly is not, so we felt that it could be stored uh, at a moisture little slightly higher than 10%, so that's why we selected 12% moisture content. Then the, but the, based on, again, our uh, overall knowledge of the grain storage principles, we felt that 12% moisture content canola should also spoil if you store for too long. 
and that's why we decided to store the canola and then do the unloading at three different times. So the first one was done when, especially if the farmer takes this canola in the bag and places the bags in the field, and the field, if they get wet, are not accessible with the machinery. So we were trying to simulate in the three un by three unloading was the one situation where the bag is in the field and the ground is frozen, that means machinery could go and you can unload the canola. Second situation was that if you missed that opportunity, then you would have to wait until the ground is, uh, ground is thawed and then it has to dry before you could get on, get on the field. Uh, so that would add another uh, four to six weeks and then you will be able to unload it. And third was uh, the condition where we uh, said that could you store for the whole year or uh, in that particular case 11 months. So that's how the three unloading dates were chosen. So what we found with 12% moisture content was that if you store in the first unload, so like the canola was uh, stored, uh, even if it goes with a high temperature at the harvest time, because of our lowering fall temperatures, canola would cool down. So it would store at that moisture until the, uh, when the ground is still frozen. And if you can unload at that time, the changes in the quality were not significant. Uh, but it still would have to be dried before marketing it because 12% moisture canola cannot be marketed. Uh, whereas once you, and then in that particular case, if you look at the grade, there was no change in the grade of canola. So we were able to maintain the grade. If you wait until the ground is thawed and then unload the bag, then there was a drop in grade. Uh, it went from number one to number two. So that is a loss for the farmers, so that has to be taken into consideration. But and if you waited for the until uh, unloading in August, then the grade became a feed grade. That means the canola has a spoil. So based on the second years of data, we can say that 12% moisture canola can be stored from four to about four to five months if we want to maintain the quality. But then that canola has to be uh, taken out and dried before uh, taking it to the elevator. The, basically, I think our recommendation would be is that if you are storing dry canola, uh, and when I'm saying dry, we are saying about around 8% moisture content, that canola you should be able to store safely for about uh, 10, uh, 10 months. 10% uh, moisture content canola you could store uh, for uh, uh, 8 to 10 months, but you have to uh, carefully monitor it that, that it's uh, not developing uh, mo due to moisture migration, hot spots, uh, and then if they, it is developing those, then some uh, corrective action has to be taken, which in this case would be to unload the grain and then do the uh, turning of the grain or you do the aeration of the grain uh, and then bring that, uh, make that moisture uniform. Uh, so 10% moisture pro uh, canola could be stored probably safely more, I would say between six to eight months. 14% uh, certainly should not be stored in the bags and then 12% uh, moisture canola probably could be stored four to five months uh, safely. Uh, storing longer than that uh, could cause uh, a loss in the uh, quality of canola.